Welcome to the Golf and Fitness Show brought to you by PGA Tour Active. I'm your host, Corey Gregory. On today's show, we have three-time LPGA Tour winner and new on-air commentator for PGA Tour Live, the great Christina Kim. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Corey. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I got to tell you, super motivated by seeing all the pictures online. And I was so pumped when Preston reached out and said, you know, I think Christina would be great for the show. And I was like, absolutely. The life change, um, just the, uh, just your overall like personality and excitement for life in general. And now with this whole health aspect on top of it, like you're doing just great things for a lot of people because when they see that, Christina, I think that that you know that's you're showcasing that transformation and that healthy lifestyle, and and everyone needs somebody to look up to. And I mean, you got to feel amazing. Well, yes, I do feel amazing. I'm not gonna lie. I have, for the most part, pretty much always felt amazing, regardless of what I look like. And I, I kind of joke that I have. Um, it's it's not very funny, in all honesty. I yeah. do still tell off-color jokes, though. I, I joke that I have, uh, like, a bit of body image dysmorphia, but in the reverse, because, mm-hmm. you know, when I was, you know, I don't know, 60 pounds ago or whatever it was, I'd, I'd look in the mirror and I'd say, you got a good heart, kid. And <laughs> that's really all that should matter. And so now, yeah. you know, I'm like, it's maybe a little less enlarged, but yeah. I still have a good heart. Like, I don't I don't oh, really yeah. feel like I look all that different or anything. I just, you know, if anyone says, hey, you look great, this I'm like, yeah, I drew my eyebrows in, thanks. So it's amazing. So really the confidence has never been a problem. No, I, I may, um, it's probably safe to say I've probably had a little bit of a, an inflated ego my entire life. And you know what? I'm okay with that. <laughs> That's okay. Because you know, the way I see it, um, you know, a lot of what's been kind of going on with me has been just, it's been far more important to focus on my mental health than it is my physical, sure. even though they are inextricably tied. And so this was, you know, this is always about trying to find a way for me to feel better about, you know, my brain and my cognitive skills and things like that. And then, you know, adipose tissue kind of yeah. leaking out on top of that has been, I guess, a nice bonus. But it's yeah. more for other people than for myself because I, I I still feel like I look the same. I'm like, you're still a good person. That's ultimately all that matters. Yeah. Christina, that's a great message. I mean, the fact that like you're downplaying a 60 pound transformation because of just the overall positivity. And you just, you just said, look, yes, I'm going to get healthier or lose the weight, but I really, that it's really just, some people just hang it on that only. And that's really not what you're about at all, which is amazing. Yeah. In all honesty, the, the, the weight loss wasn't even a part of it. <laughs> wasn't it like, was it like a pri- was it a priority? Like, the, or is it just, no, come, it, it came was, through the process. It just, came about through the process because for me the biggest thing was um you know I was in you know like cognitive decline I felt like and mm-hmm. my mental health was definitely taking a toll which you know when you when again they're all inextricably tied so you know when you're when you're not feeling you know I, I still felt strong I say strong yeah. strong with a k yeah, yeah. instead of a g at the end when you're feeling strong um but your body isn't moving the way it wants to because yeah. you know you've got dumbbells all across every inch of your body already. Um, you know, for me, it was more, I, I started off by doing the ketogenic. I, I don't like the word diet. There's so many negative connotations to it. Aside Facts. from the fact that, you know, you can't say diet without dye in it. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. That, you know, that's it, a major it's one. It's all about, you know, just, <laughs> yeah. it's just, you know, it was about, you know, just a, a, a different way to go about trying to get improve my cognitive skills. And so, um, you know, I went about going through the ketogenic lifestyle. I, and some people, you know, everyone's like, oh, should I do it? Shouldn't I do it? I say, you know, everybody's body is composed differently and everybody's body yeah. performs differently on different macros. So mm-hmm. for me, you know, anytime I had, you know, uh, an influx of carbohydrates, like my body would be like a squirrel come around fall in the winter and just kind of just kind mm-hmm. of, you know, store it and uh, not necessarily use it for energy. And so I, m- my thought was, and I mean, again, this sounds kind of crappy, but I've always been the kind to be like, you know, what's the worst that could happen? Like if I, yeah. you know, if I ended up dying because I overdosed on avocados or I, you know, Come I on. choked because I didn't, you <laughs> yeah. know, masticate enough and, and, and yeah. ended up, you know, choking on it, then yeah, I've had a good run, you know, I mean, yeah. there's, there's no point in being scared of something 
because, you know, this is the only life we get to live. So it was, you know, I I started Mm -hmm. doing the ketogenic lifestyle. I knew a couple of people that were involved in it as well. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, they looked great, but they felt great. And, you know, it's, I, it's, I'm no scientist by any means. Um, I, I, out there and it's like you know your brain is not a muscle it's a globular organ it's comprised yep. of 60 percent fat and so i was like okay well then you know all the you know all the macadamia nuts and peely nuts is like my big jam now and has been for okay. about a year um you know all the avocados the um you know the the, the beautiful oils that i'm eating everything you know those you know the fatty fishes i love mackerel it's like those are brain food because yes. your brain is comprised mostly of fat. So I'm feeding my brain. And I'm sure there are going to be a lot of people in the medical industry that are like, that's not how it works. But I like telling myself that. And then on well, top of that, you know, I mean, I was, I, well, sorry, sorry. Um, no, no, you know, you're good. Just by virtue of taking that route, you know, I was depriving myself of carbohydrates. And my body, it, it, it did go into a shift because it went from being, um, you know, just kind of, I'm just going to consume whatever. And then my body is just going to be like, all right, we'll put this here. We'll put this here. We'll put this here. We'll put this here. Yeah. Never in my ass. I still have a long back with a line at the bottom. And I think that's just how I'm genetically built. And that's okay. Um, yep. And, you know, it, since it was deprived of, you know, the carbohydrates as a source of energy, it said, well, you know, we're going to die if we don't have carbs to, con- to, to convert into energy. Like, what do we got around up in the attic? And they're like, yeah. there's a ton of fat in here. Converted like, let's see if that'll work. Yeah, exactly. Um, so that worked for me. Again, you know, I there are some people that do so well on carbs. There are some people that, you know, do really well on strictly protein. There are some people mm-hmm. that do really well on the, the, the keto lifestyle. And so I've been very fortunate that, you know, I was able to, you know, dibble and dabble. And, you know, I've done paleo before. I've done vegan i've been um you know vegetarian pescatarian i tried all kinds of different things just to see how it made my brain feel and yeah. nothing's made me feel the way that i do now so i've heard a few things that i want to touch on um one major one you've said cognitive function multiple times and i think a lot of people don't realize when they eat elevated amount of carbohydrates they are truly almost in a brain fog because of the insulin spikes and crashes and I've been a trainer for 20 years. I've explained this a million times to my clients and the, for some, and this is where my question is going. It's like, sometimes people think you're taking something away from them because you say diet or change. But the reality is when you figure it out through trial and error, like you have, it's actually giving you back way more than it's ever taken away. Like I might took away pizza, but I gave you way a clear thought process in your minds, you know, a, a lot more crispy and on the golf course and everything's just more enhanced because it's just working more effectively. So if you could speak on that, cause I think a lot of people are used to feeling not very good and not as clear, but they don't really realize because they've been like that for so long that's their normal when the reality is if you figure this out, there is a clarity from a brain, from a body that's there and available if you can figure it out. Oh, no question. And, and again, because like I say, you know, I, one of my, my, my buzzwords, if you will, is fearless, you know, cause again, I'm like, you know, what's the worst that happens? Like I had a yeah. good run, like, you know, I saw yeah. 46 get elected. I mean, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. I love um, it. But the the big thing for me is um, you're 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 right and and for me again what I do is because I've tried this as well is like you know over the span of time you know my my taste buds have changed like I I'm not gonna lie like if I would go to the grocery store like yeah I'd get all the produce I'd you know make sure that I selected you know the most beautiful fruits and vegetables if sure. that whatever whatever and then I'd be standing in line I'd be like. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, yeah. and, you know, and, or, or like I'd have a bottle of soda or, you know, mm-hmm. something like something. And, um, you know, it's, it, oftentimes you never realize like how much sugar there is in food and, you know, sugar has that, you know, reaction in your brain that it's like, sure. you know, it, it's like a, a, an illicit substance, um, where it gives your brain that immediate, like, you know, like you said, the high, and then you're followed by the crash. Like it's, yeah. It's a legal drug, in my opinion. Um, and so for me, you know, it's like, you know, I, I still consume I still consume carbs. I love vegetables. Um, I've actually gotten off fruit just because even though it's natural sugar, like my taste buds have changed. I went from being yeah. a literal sugar monster to now if I have like a strawberry that's like 
green and then white with a tiny bit of red like it just it just feels like a a, a spoonful of sugar um but like what I've I've done this three times where I've been like you know I used to I mean I your girl loved Oreos you know and I was just like I love Oreos too what's like <laughs> I'm gonna have an Oreo because I yeah. I'm not in the I I'm not in the way of depriving myself. I I like you said instead of thinking I'm gonna de- deny myself pizza. Like nowadays, if I want to have some form of pizza, it's you know I'll mm-hmm. do like you know like I'll I'll, I'll um, you know toss some Parmesan cheese in the oven, use that as a crust, and it's almost like a deconstructed pizza yeah, with like yeah, little yeah. dippers, this and that, whatever. Um, so instead of you know, saying I'm depriving myself of bread, I'm just providing my body and my digestive system that much more room to be able yeah. to consume all of the good things that have so many nutrients. Because now if I eat, um, you know, if I, I, cause every now and again, I'm just like, maybe I was wrong. Maybe I was right. You know, like, for the last, <laughs> yeah. like, you know, 30 some years and I'll, yeah. I'll take a bite of bread and instead of being pillowy and soft and this and that, I'm just like, I taste, Somehow I'll have a piece of sourdough bread. I'll taste yeah. sugar, and then it turns into a literal paste in my mouth, and I'm just like, ah. like my taste buds yeah. have changed. And so there's, there's, you know, um, and going back to it, you know, like I, I three times now, I'm like, okay, I'll try an Oreo. And when I say I'm going to have an Oreo, like I know my macros. Like I'm, 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 again, I'm not a scientist, but I'm just aware of things. And I'm like, sure. right, one Oreo has like. I don't know, 11 grams of carbs, let's say, and mm-hmm. they're like no net carbs. Oh, okay. Noted. That just means that throughout the rest of the day, I'm going to do my best to make sure I keep my fat levels high, yep. moderate protein, and try and cut out as many carbs throughout the rest of the day. And I'll take it and I'll bite into it. And I'm just like, I swear that cream has changed. Like that, that cream <laughs> filling has changed because now it's yeah, just yeah, yeah. somehow, it's just a bunch of like crystals yeah. of sugar that somehow yeah. are like stuck together. And I'm like, I don't enjoy this anymore. Like I'm, I'm glad that I know this noted like you know and, and so you know i if i ever say i'm gonna try something where i'm going, you know what screw it i'm gonna have myself like you know a little bit of like literal pizza or something like that i'll just make adjustments throughout the rest of the day i i, I am not the kind of person to say no yeah. you know i'm i um my my caddy um always jokes that i'm very um um yes and you know, uh, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm like ultimate yes, improv, so I'm like, yes, and, <laughs> yes, and, and let's add on to that, you know, like, mm-hmm. what can I do? And so, um, you know, I'm just like, okay, if I want this, okay, I'll have this. I'm not going to do not deny myself anything. Now what, you know, mm-hmm. and, and most of the time I'm like, mm, I thought it was, I rem- like, even like grapes, I had some grapes before and they were so sweet, but I remember I'm like, everything tastes better in my memory than it does like in yeah. real life nowadays so well, I, don't I think also miss you, any of it. you end up i always talk about this you start to get addicted to feeling so good and enjoying the you know the actual food that's on the earth not the processed stuff and you have an appreciation for it and yes the memory is better than the actual stuff when you come back to it that sounds like fairy tale land to a lot of people that can't really grab that concept, but there's that transition to where like people are like, are my big thing in my family, I'd be getting ready for like a natural bodybuilding show or doing these magazine things. And I'd be, I'd come up to Thanksgiving. They're like, are you eating today? Like my aunt or my mom. I'm like, I'm always going to eat at things like this in moderation because I'm looking forward to the family time and the experience and the pumpkin mm-hmm. pie. It's just that I'm not doing that on Tuesday for no reason <laughs> anymore. You know what I mean? And that's, that's why I was talking about with alcohol too. When I'm talking to my clients where I'm like, you know, do you really need that on Wednesday night? Is it somebody's birthday on Saturday? There's a game. I understand that's like an event, but I don't think we should be having event like processes daily that that's the process. So I think there's a shift in mindset, which I've heard ever since we've got on the mic that now you're just enjoying the way you feel the way these things taste. And even though you're not really talking about the necessarily weight loss, it's like that whole lifestyle of just feeling good, sharp, looking good and, um, and then performing well and better. Cause I've read the, the numbers that you picked up seven mile an hour on your club speed and 15 more yards on your drive, like all of that, getting in better positions because your body's changed. That has to feel amazing from a golfing standpoint, obviously. Oh, for sure. And uh, yes, I've definitely picked up some, some club head speed. I I think it's, it's maybe like, it's like at my max, I've gotten Mm -hmm. about seven, but I've increased about four, um, four, 
close to five and yeah, it's like 15. Um, but now it's like, because I'm at a higher swing speed, I've had yeah. to change my shaft and by way of changing the shaft and changing, you know, just based off of speed, I'm able to launch it a little bit higher, drop yeah. the spin. So it's like, it's not just that I'm like hitting it farther. I'm carrying it farther and I'm getting less spin on the ball, That's which great. is amazing. Um, but yes, like for me, everything, when it comes to, like, I always tell people golf and life are yeah. so, um, analogous, you know, cause it's like, you know, and, and the way I see it, you know, the golf swing is backswing plus downswing plus impact plus follow through equals what the ball does, just like your putting stroke, like mm. backstroke plus impact will determine what the ball does. It's simple math. So for me, it's like, um, you know, the, the, the foods that I consume, um, plus my digestive process will mm -hmm. equal how I feel. And so through, again, yeah. a lot of that trial and error, I was able to be like, oh, thank God, I don't have to give up spinach. You know, like that sounds kind of silly, but spinach has been one of my go to like foods my entire life. And I'm like, all right, I love that. And, um, you know, even being able to like test different oils and seeing like which oils I enjoy. But, um, oh, I had something you that I was going to be, be You have become a student of the game. See that? That's the thing. It's just like any other thing. You have to just like in golf trial and error hands this way that like how many different things have you tried over your entire career food and diet and lifestyle it's all the same thing it happens to be my job i've done it all this time mm -hmm. but everybody should be testing things like this to see how they feel and get i always talk about when people have been with me for a period of time whether it's online in person whatever once they learn their body that was really my job i'm right. helping them uncover what is that kind of dream scenario of I would say what can they get away with what should they be eating and then you know at that point where maybe they are a little depleted by the end of the week that's when I would allow them to hey okay you know what let's go ahead and get some wings or grab a beer or whatever but they've been depleted from training and doing that I almost kind of need that to kind of get through from a glycogen standpoint so it's like trying to like really establish like that lifestyle and I think everyone should be pursuing that a lot of people don't. That's why I really like kind of really your direction of this story and just the way that you're talking about it is because it's really uncovering what the best possible scenario is for each person. And a lot of people just don't do that. So I think that narrative is like awesome for people to be listening to, in my opinion. Oh, thank you. I, 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 I would just say for me, the thing that kind of really, even though this aspect of my life has only been, you know, the last, I don't know, 16 months or so, let's say, oh. When I turned 30, like I can tell you, like when I was 29 years old and 364 days old, um, I said I knew everything, you know, and on my 30th birthday, I woke up and I was like, I don't know a damn thing. And that allowed me to open my mind and open my heart to mm -hmm. all of the amazing things in the universe. Where'd that and come so, from, Christina? Where'd that come I, from? I don't know. It must have been a weird ass dream that I had yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> on the last day of my 20s. I don't know. I just remember I woke up on my 30th and, you know, wow. I've had friends that are just like, oh, you know, I can't. Oh, God. They're like, I, 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 I can't believe I'm turning 30 this year. And I'm like, I know, right? I'm like five yeah. more years, we could run for president. You know, yeah, like yeah. <laughs> my last milestone birthday at that point was 25. Cause I'm like, I yeah. will rent a, I'll be able to rent a car from some shady car rental places just cause I can rent from anybody. You know, it's like these milestone birthdays. And so Funny. for me, um, you know, I don't know what, what set it off. I just remember waking up and I was like, I know nothing. How amazing is that, you know, because yeah. you don't stop learning once you graduate Ever. from high school, when you graduate no. from college, when you get your, your PhD, your master's, whatever it is, any certification, you know, it's everything, every single waking moment can be a lesson. And, and so for me, it's just turned life so much more fun because all of a sudden it's like, it's not that I sit here and say that I'm stupid. I'm just a well that is just, you know, it's just we've got raindrops coming in every mm -hmm. single moment of every single day. And it's just been like, for me, that's been the most transformative part of my life. And so I think, you know, part of what's been going on with um, waves vaguely into the ether, you know, with yeah. everything going on this this last year, um, there have been so many people that, again, and it comes also from, you know, that, that lifetime in so far of fearlessness, because I'm like, I'm not afraid to be wrong. Yeah. Like if I find out I'm wrong, I'm like, okay, 
Now I know what is correct Learn from it. Yeah. And I can utilize that, you know? And, yeah, and so for, for me, it's like, you, you know, just ain't scared, um, Christina. I ain't scared. I love you know? it. <laughs> like, well, like my parents, they were always so encouraging, you know, and, and mm. it was sort of like, you know, there's a difference be between being told, don't touch that. That's or don't touch the stove. It's hot. Or being like, mm -hmm. Hey, the hot's really stove. Why don't we go over here to the refrigerator and let's see if we can get you a, a, a string cheese or something like that. It's mm -hmm. the same thing. It's just one is encouraging and one is discouraging. And so my parents, mm -hmm have always been so encouraging of me and that's something that I like to sort of you know lead off with with the people that I speak to and everything like that like there's nothing to be scared of like everything you know and and you know so a lot of this I guess has to do with um you know the 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 mental health aspect of everything and you know my my, my bouts of depression my my um my call my close calls with suicide things like that you know it's just mm -hmm. it, it gets to a point where you have to see uh, like I had to see the positives in everything because sure. otherwise, like I would have jumped off the, the, you know, the, the top of a castle years ago, you know, or I would have done this or I would have done that. And so it's like, no, like this is life, you know, this is the yeah. only life that we're guaranteed. You know, no one knows what goes on beyond this. No one knows if we get reincarnated. And if we do, I do not want to come back as a rock. So, <laughs> you know, it's, it's all about leaving good you know, all around you. I'm crop dusting everyone with goodness. <laughs> no, and that's, and that's all. so it's amazing because there's no one that's going to be in the room with you that doesn't vibe with that and doesn't feel, they might not vibe with it, but they're going to feel it either way. So <laughs> it's good. Um, one thing I was going to share with you that I've really found super beneficial to all the athletes, some golfers, but mo any pro athletes or up from high school up that I've worked with. So we do something after we lift weights instead of like conditioning or running mm -hmm. we do lunges for periods of time or distance so that's hey. like my mo yes and so i read one of the things i was reading about you uh in one of the articles was talking about how you did a lot of lunges a single leg work and i was like this is perfect so my concept back to the mental health part was lunge and learn or we call it lunge university so we'll lift weights in them so i, I train at four in the morning to like five thirty or whatever and then i go to the track and i lunge 400 to 800 meters that's my conditioning knee touch wow. knee, so it's like a quarter or half mile every day but while i'm doing that i listen to my audio book and what's interesting is you're getting that you know kind of runner's high feel from it because i've already lifted weights so i've depleted myself a little bit that's my conditioning there's no one out there it's still dark i'm listening to an audio book or a podcast like this or something inspirational and i did i've done that for like eight years so I've had streaks where I've done 300 days in a row, 150, like all these different times. When I met David Goggins, actually, I was on a 300 day streak of listening to. So I'm listening to an hour, hour and a half of audio material between my drive time to my gym I own and the lunges. And it became this kind of really kind of big thing in, like in my culture subset because people are like, I don't want to run. I don't want to do the elliptical this keeps me stronger. Your hips stay more involved, especially for mm -hmm. like a golf, if, especially if you have good form, knee behind the toe, you get to where your base level of strength is 400 meters lunges. You're not even sore. You're, I mean, your strength in your hips and glutes is crazy. Then on top of it, you're getting quality material through your headphones. Mm -hmm. You get done and you feel like you can have a solution for whatever's coming your way especially when you're crispy on your diet and all these things kind of interlock. So I, I wanted to share that with you because maybe not when you have some big tournament going on or something, because you might not be able to walk for a couple of days, but I would really love to hear if you give it a try for, you know, a few days of lunge and 400, listening to your favorite audio book. I think you would really enjoy it. It's tough, but it's, it's very rewarding. Yes. And I will, I, I will do that. I'm yeah. I'm not going to do that today because no. I actually I'm going to go play with friends. I just I just got back from the gym, so if I'm pouring sweat like Brendan Fraser in um, what was it uh, Bewitched? No, not Bewitched. What was the Casino? Uh, no, when when Elizabeth Hurley was a devil. Ah, oh, crap! I forget. But there's this anyway. It doesn't matter. <laughs> um, and then so I'm going to go play with my friends, and then I've got a float tank therapy session this evening, so I'm Ooh, not going to have those time. Those are awesome. Yeah. Oh, oh my God. Those are, those, those are life changing. Cause Is that again, weekly for, for you? me, so pre pandemic, it was weekly. This is going to be my first trip since August. Oh, wow. Okay. Yes. So for me, when I can make it weekly, I, I, I do make it weekly. Um, mm -hmm. when I first started diving into it, I did 
six and a half hours in one week. I had one three hour session, which was great because I yeah. learned I'm an hour and a half girl. Okay. Um, to where it starts like, to get there. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, as it's like I, I nowadays I'll, I'll book an hour and a half and it's always 84 to 87 minutes. Like I'm like, okay, I'm done. Yeah, I got everything yeah. that I needed to out of this. That's and great. it's like, like clockwork. My brain's always just like, we're between 84 and 87 minutes. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's great because it's, it's, um, you know, obviously it's got great benefits benefits to the physical part of it because of yep. all the Epsom salts and just the weightlessness and everything. But for me, it's just yeah, like, you know, the sensory deprivation, I just turn into a floating brainstem and like say the brain waves start going, the, the pineal gland just opens up and I've got floods of serotonin, melatonin, dopamine, everything. I have swirling colors in this blackness. It's, oh, so I would recommend that for anyone. I've only done it three times, but the second time, the last five minutes of the hours when the swirling mm-hmm. colors started for me. Yes. And then I was like, Ooh, so I, that's why, you know, trial and error brain, same way. I'm like, okay, I'm at 50 minutes. That's starting to click in. Cause I, I didn't even know what to expect. And that started right. happening. I'm like, the hell is this? Like, you know, yeah. but super open-minded to it. I need to get back to it. Cause it is, you do feel extremely refreshed. Oh, it's incredible. Try 90 yeah. minutes. I will. If, 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 it, if it comes on in about at about the 50 minute mark, yeah. try 90 minutes. 90 like minutes. I, I get about 75 minutes of the, of the, of the floating colors. Like, cause as soon as I, it's like, as soon as I get into the water or like my brain immediately is just like, just flat lines, like everything just flat lines in my pineal gland, just like blooms like a flower. And it's just like, like my journey generally starts where it's like you're in blackness. And then all of a sudden I see these tiny little specks and I'm like, Oh, okay. I'm floating in space. This is amazing. And I'm so like cool. coming across all of these, you know, uh, various solar systems and all of that. And then it's like, you know, it'd be like a, a picture that Jimmy Walker posts on Instagram where it's like you see a nebula and you see all yeah, the, yeah. the gaseous clouds and everything. And then it's like it goes from green to red and purple. And it's oh, my gosh. And then, like, I get up and I'm just like, oh, man, like yeah. I'll sit in traffic for four hours. I'm OK. <laughs> You're like, I'm good. So uh, lunges, good. lunges was the one thing I read. And the other thing is, is the hat. Tell me about the hat, where it, where it comes from why you love it. It's, it's, it's through uh, all your pictures over the years, whether it's Kangle, whether it's a sponsor, but talk about um, just that style and you, how, where, where does that come from? Well, so one, I've always had just a little bit of like a rebellious streak in me. Um, I I always abide by the rules. I will, you know, obey laws, but I love having just, just a little bit of like punk rock. And so for me, um, it was a combination of things. Like I, um, you know, I because w- I will still wear baseball hats on occasion, but for mm-hmm. tournament rounds, no, there's no chance. Like I have this thing where like I could look in the mirror and the brim of a baseball hat could be absolutely perfectly square and even this, that, and like I'll look up and it'll look like this. <laughs> and so my eyes, like I, I sit there and I'm like, I, what yeah. is what is straight? And when you for golf, you need to have your your eyes, you know, dead straight. So yeah. if I'm sat there and I feel like I'm like this. It's like my my brain, you know, on a cognitive level, my brain is firing off way too many things, and it's it's going to it. um, take away from the ability to clear my mind, which is what you want to do is have a um, a quiet mind, quiet eye when you're whenever you're you know about to make contact with the golf ball, and um, and so when I was you know it was my rookie year, first tournament, played with a hat, like you know it was I, I played great, I finished fourth in my first event, but mm-hmm. I was I was just at a turn. I was we were in LA. My dad and I went to K Town. We we're like, let's go, let's check stuff out, and mm-hmm. we went to a shop, and I just saw a angle hat, and I was like, I love it. I put it on. I was like, I love this, and I flipped it around. I was like, oh. Oh, this is me. This oh, is me. And there's no brim. <laughs> yeah. I like everything kind of and like it's fell approved. In I can wear it, right? I never asked. I so my my first tournament on tour, I actually I I was cool. I was always cool as a kid. I wore yeah. knee high socks with my trousers tucked into them and golf sandals. And the knee high socks were like neon colored. And I was like a candy kid. I had like the plastic beads. I like made hemp jewelry, all of that. I love it. And I went to the LPGA um, and at 18 years old, I went up to one of our rules officials, the head rules official. um, And jokingly, I was like, hey, these sandals are good, right? And he's like, actually the LPGA does have a closed toe shoe policy. So, hey. You think I'm cool now? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 
I, you know, aside from being fearless, like, you know, everyone, especially nowadays, you know, because I'm still a little bit of like the old school class. Like, I, you know, I'm in mm -hmm. my 30s, which some people would consider old. I'm again, like I still tell fart jokes. So last thing mm -hmm. I am is old. Um, you know, I was 18 when I got when I first got my tour card. So I was one of those kids growing up. But I, I just remember always thinking, you know, like just it's so hard to be someone else. Like you have to yes. go out of your way to be something different from what you are and who you are. Um, and so, you know, back. And it was very. And everyone's like, man, you and, you know, for me, I'm like, well, I think I would say thanks, mm -hmm. but I really don't give a hoot that you think I don't give a hoot. Yeah. Like, you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's just about, um, you know, con having confidence is definitely needed. If you're going to wear something that's not, you know, gray, blob, faceless robot, whatever, unless mm -hmm. that's your vibe, then go ahead and rock that vibe. But, you know, it's just with that confidence is a, um, an effect of just knowing who you are and being okay with who you are. Cause yeah. it's like, Double down no. on you. I've always said yeah. that because there's only one version. Exactly. So and you're stuck with something? yourself. That's fact. Yeah. <laughs> That's a fact. It's true. Like, you know, yeah. everyone, especially, you know, and this is kind of veering off, but when it comes to, you know, it's so important to me to talk about mental health. Like, you know, when, let's say, if we, because we all have our ups, we all have our downs. Some of us feel it a bit more acutely. Some of us are far more empathetic than others. There's nothing mm -hmm. wrong with being more or less empathetic. Um, but, you know, like, let's say if you're having a, a, a really bad stretch and, you know, it's like you you're, you're you're saying all these horrible things, you're 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 feeling terrible, whatever. It's like sometimes it's it's easy to get so wrapped up and caught up in that. But for me, like I've because I've had to tell a number of friends over the years, it's like, you know, like it hurts me to hear you say those things, especially after everything that I've been through. But it's like, you know, sometimes if you were to take yourself out of the equation and say whether it's your best friend, your lover, um, you know, your your favorite parent, because I'm sure we all have one, um, mm -hmm. you know, or, a ch or your, your, your child, um, you know, your favorite child, because I'm sure those exist as well. Or, you know, just someone that is is the most important person to you, where saying these things about themselves to you, would you stand for that? Mm -hmm. And it's like, no, you would never allow your friend to say, I'm worthless, I'm terrible, I'm fat, I'm ugly, I'm this, I'm that. Like, so why would you allow yourself to you. be treated that way by yourself if you wouldn't stand for that for anyone else? Like, you know, you're the only one that you're stuck with. And you can look upon that as like, yeah, I get to spend the entire, my entire life with myself as yeah. opposed to being stuck with it yourself, you know? Um, so that's, you know, that, that's something that's super important to me about just, you know, and that again comes into the whole, you know, concept of self-love, which will come yeah. into the whole concept of confidence, which is, you know, maybe this roundabout way of why I wear this hat. <laughs> yeah. No, but that's, I mean, I think that understanding that there's a lot more to do than it's, than it just, a, just a hat. Cause it's not. And that's where, like when I saw Bryson, or seeing what he's doing, some craziness, right? You just, I think it's just one of those things that if you know, you know, I mean, yeah. and I mean, even all the way back to Payne Stewart obviously made it super popular, you know, mm -hmm. in, in what the eighties and not early nineties. Right. Yeah. And so you saw his swag with the, with the, with the, the short pants and the whole nine. And mm -hmm. I think that there's just like, there's a, a lot of people over time that have kind of that's just been part of what they do. So anyway, I just, that was one of the things I, I really enjoyed by looking back at some of the old pictures. Um, golf wise, what is your focus right now? I know that you were practicing to um, the date. So what do you, what do you got coming up? Well, one time is a man-made construct. So that's part of it. So my bad. Um, <laughs> but You're good. I, um, you know, it's since we're, you know, still in the pandemic we're just not in the very first year of the pandemic and as a result of that we have been able to educate ourselves so much um, by way of how we handle things in regards to it um, in 2020 uh, our commissioner mike Wan had made the decision to say um, i out of an abundance of caution and because i don't want to make any of my tour players feel obligated or forced or anything like that um you know i want you guys to use your best judgment and if you feel comfortable coming out and playing 
by all means come out and play. And if you don't feel comfortable coming out and playing and you, or if you have any underlying health conditions or, you know, you're, you, you always travel with your family and, you know, if you have parents that are older, whatever the cause is, don't feel like you're obligated to play. And so um, the status that you had at the end of the 2019 season is what you're going to start the 2021 season with. So 2020 was basically a free for all, like, you know, with the exception of winning, like there's, there was no, it was like a, basically a year of no consequences, which I thought was great. It was something I fully supported. I still do. Even if that means that, you know, um, having a good season last year with three top tens did not improve my, my priority list standing for Mm -hmm. 2021 just yet so the first two events of the year uh, um, are limited you know smaller field events are not full full field events and so I'm having to deal with the um, unique world that is Monday qualifiers Uh, yeah (laughs) yes and prior to prior to this bout I'd really only ever done two in my entire professional career so you know, wow. having to figure that out. It's a definitely a different beast. And yeah, yeah. Um, a new I'm, challenge. A, exactly. A new opportunity, a new yeah, chance for I me to that. learn, um, you know, and, and so, you know, having played in one and, you know, learned a lot. Um, it's uh, yeah. And so I'm basically just preparing for tournaments, getting ready for my season. I do know that my season will start off on the West coast, um, you know, and, um, I'm you know, definitively will start off on the West Coast. It might start before that, but at the very latest, it'll start off in um, you know in March. And so you know, I'm just I'm just grinding. You know, I'm learning every yeah. shot, every moment, every swing, every stroke. Like it's it's I'm just having a blast. I'm having a ball, um, and you know, just continuing to work my ass off and just trying to get better every single day. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, I'm looking forward to watching you this season. I've, I want to be respectful of your time. I've really enjoyed to get to know you over this 30-some minutes. And uh, where can everybody find you at on social media, Christina? Um, well, because I have such a unique name like Christina Kim, um, mm-hmm. I'm like one of like, I don't know, I think when I looked on Facebook, like back in like the mid-2000s, it was like, you know, you're one of like 5,322 <laughs> at the time. And so the number's only, it only you know, exponentially grown. So I, you can find me at, uh, on all social media platforms at the Christina Kim, T-H-E, Christina the. with a C-H okay. and an A at the end because my name's not Christine. Christina. There's just Go with that third. Just clear that up. Just, just need that third <laughs> syllable. I was called Christine so much in, in, in yeah. school by all my teachers. And I'm like, Christine has the same number of letters. You're just being too lazy to not say the third syllable. Um, yeah, yeah. So I'm at the Christina Kim. And yeah, I mean, come say hi. Check it out. Like I post lots of videos of, with regards to my swing, working out with my trainer, Ryan Blackburn over at Orlando Golf Performance. Um, you know, my travels, my travails. I love, love, love to cook. So I'll, you know, I, sometimes I, I, I post uh, pictures with what I eat. Sometimes, Ooh. you know, every now and again, I'll have recipes. Um, and yeah, like. You're you know, a great just, follow. That's what you're saying right now. I don't know. But they're just dependent. And I, sometimes I say funny things. I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to see if anybody, if they want to follow me, they can follow me. If they don't want to follow me, they don't want to follow me. No, um, I do great. get political on occasion. So, okay, good. you know, you know, I, I, I'm a firm believer in uh, having conversations with people, regardless of whether their opinions agree with mine or not, because that's, again, an opportunity we need. for me to learn. Exactly. Conversation, discussion, doesn't have to yeah. even be a debate. Like, I can yeah. still see that you have a different political belief than I, and you know what? I can still ask, how are you? And I can still give a damn about how you actually are because, you know, we are not, def- there's no way to define any one person based off of any one word. That's a great way to end. Off of any one word. That's a great way to end right there. Amazing. Christina, thank you so much. This is the Golf and Fitness Show, everybody. Make sure you share it with your friends. I'm your boy, Corey G. That's at Christina Kim, and we are out. Thank you.